Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. You heard the other night at debate, they asked Ted Cruz, fierce question, well, what do you think of waterboarding? Is it okay? And honestly, I thought he'd say absolutely, and he didn't. He said, well, it's, you know, he's concerned about the answer, because some people, she just said a terrible thing. You know what she said? Okay, you're not allowed to say, and I never expect to hear that from you again. She said, I never expect to hear that from you again. She said he's a p That's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Yeah, Obama's laughing all the way to Karl Marx's mausoleum in Moscow like he cares. What a dumb country. What a stupid nation we live in. One word, one word, and all of the idiots in the media go crazy. All of the vermin who destroy this country are making that the issue, not what the character in the White House has done, is doing, and will do to this country. So he came on my show yesterday, Donald Trump did, and the last thing I said to him was, Donald, don't go soft, stay strong. And no, he didn't just leave. You know what he said? Thanks for telling me that, Michael. He goes out to New Hampshire, and within a half an hour, an hour, he gives a speech, and he gets stronger than he's been in a long time. And let me ask you something, all you Trump haters. Did his poll numbers go down? Did he got harder like he was in the beginning? Or did his poll numbers go up? Why his poll numbers have gone up? Right now in New Hampshire, Trump is polling at 33, Rubio 14, K6 17, Cruz 10, Bush 9, Christie 8, blah, blah, blah. Trump is up 16 points over the others. In New Hampshire as well, from the communist side, Sanders at 53 and the corrupt Harrodin is at 44. Nine points up for the communists from the gutters of New York. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, I'm going to talk about why I am not a socialist. As I told you, I pioneered the idea that every show should have a theme if it could. I did that years ago. I can't do it every day, but today there's a theme, why I am not a socialist. And the reason I'm going to tell you that is because I naturally should be a socialist. I'm an immigrant son. I'm an immigrant son. We were poor, in plain English. I had a lot of impediments thrown at me all along the way. I was an early uh, social worker on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Then I was a school teacher. All of these professions were filled 99 to 1 with left-wing fanatics. Many of those same people are either dead today that I worked with when I was younger, or they're running New York City or the world into the ground. They learn nothing from history. They are stuck in amber. They fell into an amber pit in 1969, and they've never crawled out of it. So why am I not a socialist? As an immigrant son, as I said to you, who grew up in a left-wing environment in New York City, in a cauldron of an immigrant community that was largely left-wing, you would think that I, Michael Savage, would be a natural Bernie Sanders supporter, wouldn't you? Now remember, school, school teacher, social worker, far-left individuals, so why am I the son of an immigrant from a poor family? Why am I not a socialist? Well, that is one of the things I intend to talk with you today about on the Savage Nation. I will also give you the results coming out of New Hampshire, because although the polls will not be closed before the show is over, I think we'll pretty much know who won the primaries uh, before my show is over. We'll have the results before anyone else uh, for you today, because they're coming in as we talk. They are voting right now, and right now Trump is up 16 points. Cruz has fallen to a sad number of three. So something's going on in New Hampshire. Not that New Hampshire is the most important bellwether, it is still an anomaly as far as I'm concerned, demographically, in many other ways. And as I said to you, the motto of the New Hampshire Democrat Party should be live free, get high. I mean, Bernie Sanders should have balloons that he gives out that just say live free, get high, because that's what he's offering. He's offering something for nothing to everyone. And he's telling you just stay high because that's the normal state of human events. And it comes back to me. Why am I not a socialist? Well, I don't, I don't know that I want to get into this right now. I will do it today on the Savage Nation. I also will touch on the Zika virus because it's spreading. It's spreading rapidly. 
And what you need to know today is the origin of the Zika virus. And you're going to have to search far and wide. I had to go to Arab News to get more information on this than almost any other website because the kingdom of Saudi Arabia does not want its kingdom destroyed by the Zika virus or any other epidemiological uh, a factor. And so they'll tell the people the truth because the signs and symptoms of the Zika virus are very similar to others from Africa, such as Rift Valley fever and dengue fever. Now, what does it have to do with anything? It has to do with everything. And we'll talk about that. We'll tell you how Zika virus originated. I'll tell you right now. You know how it was first identified? It was first identified in Uganda in 1947 in rhesus monkeys through a monitoring network of sylvatic yellow fever. What does that mean to the average person? It was endemic in the monkey population in Uganda. And then it was subsequently identified in humans in 1952 in Uganda and the United Republic of Tanzania. How did it go from uh, rhesus monkeys to humans? The answer is it is known as a zoonotic infection. It went from the animal to man. How did it go from the animal to man? Well, monkeys are eaten in Africa, number one. That's important for you to know. And they're often not cooked properly. That's number two. So there are modes of transmission that are known to epidemiologists that are very important for you to understand. It is often not a lethal disease, incidentally. And you can do things to protect yourself against Zika when it starts to uh, appear around you in your neighborhood as a result of the immigrants who are flooding into every neighborhood in the United States of America thanks to the madman in the White House. The madman who has crushed our borders and flooded every neighborhood with every possible individual from the third world, sick, diseased, or terrorist that they may be, it doesn't matter to him. All that matters is he changes the demographics of America once and for all and forever. And I'll tell you what you can do to fortify yourself against any viral disease, for that matter. It's commonsensical to some regard, but some of it you do not know. Now, you can find it in my newly released, I think it's out actually today. Actually, it is out today. It's called Diseases Without Borders, and it's only an e-book, and it's very inexpensive. And it was uh, made specifically so that a large number of people would access this book. It cannot be bought in bookstores at this time. That's another topic I want to talk about. But I know most of you only want to talk about the issue in New Hampshire, and I don't blame you. So let's begin at the beginning. I'm going to invite listeners to this program on my stations, on my affiliates, rather, in New Hampshire. We're on WEZS, 1350 AM in Laconia and Concord, New Hampshire. I'm also heard on WCCM in Manchester, New Hampshire, uh, 1110 on the dial. You're also hearing me on WGAW out of Boston, 1340 on the dial, coming in to New Hampshire. And if you are listening to the Savage Nation right now, either on the Internet, where my show is number one as the number one streaming show in talk radio, or in any of these stations, I invite you to call with an on-the-ground report to 855-400-7282, 855-400-SAVAGE. Now, here are some of the questions about New Hampshire that make it very interesting uh, in a certain way and also very tragic in another way, and that is... The high rates of heroin use and the high rates of welfare use in the late great state of New Hampshire. How did that happen? How did heroin use skyrocket in New Hampshire? How did it happen and why is it happening? A lot of it has to do with the President of the United States of America. He has fundamentally told the DEA to stand down. He has broken our borders open. He will not crack down on the gangs that are dealing drugs into New Hampshire because everyone knows where it's coming from. Groups such as captured drug lord El Chapo Guzman, uh, his Sinaloa cartel, we are reading in various sources, were beginning to ship heroin and fentanyl from the U.S. southern border to their associates in New England. Did you know that? Immigrants and epidemics, including the drug epidemic. But you want to keep dancing around the maypole of Bernie Sanders and you want to commit suicide, you can do so without me if you don't mind. So I'll go on. So they started to ship heroin and fentanyl from the border with Mexico to their distributors in New England. And much of the heroin and fentanyl consumed in New Hampshire is distributed by Dominican drug dealers in nearby Lawrence, Massachusetts, and brought over state lines by drug users who travel to the working class city to buy it. Did you know any of this? Has any of this come up in any of the discussions about the great 
the great genius in the White House and what he's done to your country every time you hear how a great man he is? He is responsible for the increased drug epidemic and the increased epidemic of poverty in New Hampshire and everywhere else. Heroin use itself is a very interesting discussion. Why is it going up? Because prescription opioid prices have been jacked up in recent years, making it cheaper for a junkie to use heroin than to use OxyContin. Many of the weak in our society, the weak, those who don't want to face life, don't tell me everyone who's an addict started with pain and then escalated from there into drug use. It's not true. Many people take these drugs and can very, very easily get off them. But there are many people who get sick, they need these pain pills, and they never get off them. So don't say it's a, a automatic that you go off from a pain pill to an addict. It's not true. So why are so many people going from using pain pills for legitimate reasons and becoming addicts so quickly? Well, let's look at the drugs themselves in New Hampshire and everywhere else. Okay, we know the number one drug, the scourge, that many people say should be eliminated altogether, but the pharmaceutical industry, through their lobbyists, will not permit the uh, so-called representatives that we have to eliminate this drug. The drug is, raise your hand, boys and girls in the audience, if you know the name of the drug, that is more potent than heroin and, frankly, more dangerous than heroin. Yes, it's made in nice, clean, crisp laboratories, as sterile as can be, and it's addicting the world, and we all know the name of that drug. And what's happened is a lot of young people are grinding these things up. At, in the beginning, they grind them up, and they snort it on a piece of paper. And they get a rush. They get a high. And they say, that's really great. I'm not an alcoholic like my father. I'm not a pot smoker like my mother. I'm really something different. I'm using this nice, clean drug that I'm snorting. Well, before long, they're addicted, and it's very expensive. Each pill is maybe $60, produced by your friends in the pharmaceutical industry. While a bag of heroin can be bought for as low as $5. So you understand there is a dollar dynamic to all of this as well. Does, does any, uh, do any of you care about this? Or do you want me to just read poll numbers to you? I don't know. Maybe people just tune in to hear what they already heard and what they can read in three seconds on a website. I don't even know anymore what people want to hear anymore. So I'll just keep going with what I'm interested in. Well, would you like the uh, Trump 33, Rubio 14, K6 17, Cruz 10, Bush 9, Christie 8, Fear in a 3, Carson 1, and they're running. They're running at the New Hampshire Downs. They're running around the track. When is this going to end? When will this damn election be over in this sick country of mine? I never saw a nation like this in the world. There's no nation on earth that could get away with this. The people would go and go crazy in the streets if someone ran an election for, for as long as this is going on. You, you think that this is necessary? Do you actually think that this primary system is not an antiquated system that should be thrown out with the, with the buggy whip? What kind of nation is this that's still using a system in place since 1814? It doesn't work for us in the modern world. It's unnecessary. We should have a vote that takes no longer than 60 days from the time of announcement to the time of voting, and that's the end of it already. At least I think so. I've had enough of this. Now, one of the driving forces in this election are the television stations, Fox News, CNN, uh, the cable news channels in particular. CNN, Fox News, MSNBC are driving you like drug addicts to pay attention to their talking heads day and night about the stupid race. He's up, he's down, he said this, will he go up? He said that, will he go down? She changed her hairdo, she looks like Rachel Maddow. What is she trying out for a part on MSNBC? I'll talk about her in a minute. The portrait of Doriana Kelly. I've never seen anything like a woman changing before my eyes. The more she became vicious to Donald Trump and the Republicans, the more poor sign her face became. And I'm using a very kind word. I have never seen a newscaster's face change before my eyes as dramatically as uh, Megan uh, uh, Kelly's face is. And I think she's changing her hairdo to do with the face because the hairdo doesn't work for her. You want me to do news views and reviews? I'll do it. I am observing something happening to a human being as a result of the ugliness seeping out of her soul. She knows what she did is wrong. She knows she shouldn't have done it, but she's so greedy for power, meaning ratings, that she did it and she'll, she'll do it again. She'll do it over and over again, and the more she does it, her face will become more and more inc increasingly less attractive, and her hair will become increasingly shorter. One man's observation, God, it's 22 minutes after the hour. I don't know how this happened. I'll be back.
Welcome back to Mike and Savage. I was the first one in the media, radio or television or print media,